UFC's first pay-per-view of 2024 will mark the comeback to Toronto, Canada. The MMA leader once again making its presence felt in the Great White North. What a night, ladies and gentlemen. For an explosive matchup that guarantees chaos. This match is a grudge match. You know you won't finish me. You won't even get close. You're I don't got to worry about finishing about. Your coach will finish you in the back like you're Used to. The new middleweight champion Sean Strickland will face the South African finisher Dreykus Duplessis in the main event of UFC 297 on January 20th. Starting 2024 with a banger, Sean Strickland versus Dreykus Duplessis, the fight that needed to happen. A fight that took an unexpected turn, escalating into the must-see matchup of the new year. Oh, and then oh. Out of nowhere. When you have two guys that really think they're going to win, that's when you have a great fight. It would seem as though Duplessis and Strickland is headed for great fight status. It's the unfiltered American workhorse versus the dynamic finisher keen on becoming the first UFC champion from South Africa. We're going to have one heck of a fight come 20th January. The only thing I want to do is make this man bleed, and it's going to be a good one. Come along as we illuminate the stories of the two middleweights competing in the first pay-per-view headliner of the year. These two matched up together will make for a sensational fight, and I cannot wait for it. Let's take an inside look into the main event of UFC 297. This one is going to be fun, boys. I will take your fucking soul, you understand, you fucking pussy? <laughs> Dude, this is MMA. Crazy shit happens all the time. For Sean Strickland, becoming the UFC middleweight champion seemed like an unlikely reality. Sean Strickland impressed me so much in that Adesanya fight. Talking to Sean, he had a bit of this uncertainty about himself. Any way you cut it, it's a hard fight. It's a hard fight. But the moment he got to the octagon, he beat Izzy, man. Literally, bro, never in a million years would I thought I'd be here, man. It's the UFC's worst night. Oh, man, you know, fucking, you know, Hunter and Dana were like, fuck this. This is the best nightmare. This is a beautiful nightmare for the UFC. This is not their worst nightmare. This is a soldier through and through. Here's a man that deserves it. Sean Strickland's a man that's done it the old-fashioned way, through hard work, blood, sweat, determination. From growing up in a hostile environment, turning to MMA as a necessary escape. Then, entering the UFC as a welterweight and ultimately moving up to middleweight, this self-proclaimed villain has always had to endure the path of the gritty underdog. But Sean Strickland does not care. He lives for a proper fight. A lot of people in the sport that don't like fighting. Sean genuinely enjoys fighting. I'm ready to fucking die here, you. There's no one that trains the way he does. So we did like a no time limit, 40 minute boxing, just whoever quits. Oh, know. Jesus Christ. Yeah, just because we're just bored, you know. CTE special. Oh, fuck yeah. Taking every fight the UFC offers him, even against young prospects on short notice, and proving to be too much, is what earned him his long awaited title shot against Israel Adesanya. But the shot was to be his. The beloved South African Dricker still knocks Duplessis. The physicality that this man brings to the octagon is just absolutely incredible, and uh, he's underrated no more. Dricus Duplessis, the number two ranked middleweight in the world, has had quite the rise. Dricus Duplessis is 6 0 in the UFC, and all but one of them have been finishes. Debuting in the UFC in 2020 and bursting onto the scene by going head first into the action every time, Duplessis has made it a point to show the world what MMA in South Africa is all about. There's something within the ground and something within the soil and within the blood of South Africa that makes us true warriors. We are 100% built different. You know, when I go into a fight, I know this guy, maybe he's more skilled than me. Maybe he's a better wrestler, maybe he's a better striker. That doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's the two of us getting in there. And when it comes down to a dog fight, I know I'm coming out uh, as a victor. After finishing almost all his opposition and making a huge statement in his last time out, there was no denying him a title shot. 
where the highly anticipated battle of who is the most African was supposed to go down just two months later. If you do ancestry on me, on, on me I know where the fuck I'm from. If you do it on him, go find out where the fuck he's from. They wouldn't say South Africa. I'm gonna take it out to Africa. I'm the African fighter in the UFC. But with not enough time for Duplessis to recover and get ready for the fight of his life, Strickland was called up for the opportunity. Strickland, you're in. Let's do the man dance. Based on the stylistic matchup and the fact that he was flying across the world to take on one of the greatest champions in history, not very many people gave Strickland a serious chance. But not only did Strickland win, he absolutely dominated in one of the biggest upsets we've seen. And now he is set to defend his title against the man who was supposed to be in his shoes at UFC 293. It was never about fighting a person, it was about fighting for the world title. And as soon as Sean Strickland became champion, that's where my focus went. And uh, I'm looking forward to becoming world champion. We knew this was the fight to make. Duplessis has rightfully earned his shot at the middleweight title. What he's been able to do in such a short amount of time is flat out incredible. I was always hard on Drakus, and then now I'm looking at him like, oh, he beat Robert Whitaker, he beat who down. is the man, and he beat him down. Robert Whitaker's only losses in the past decade were to the champion Israel Adesanya. So to see Dreykus finish him in the way he did just left zero doubt that he had to be next. I can't wait to fight the champion. I mean, it's pretty clear I'm the number one contender. I've beaten the guy who's been at the top of the pile for the last decade. It's been years since the UFC has done a seasonal press conference, but starting them back up was one of the best things they could do. And this fight needed something like this. I just want to make motherfuckers bleed. And Dragus is the next one who's going to fucking bleed. You think your dad beat the shit up you? you? Your dad doesn't have shit on me. I'm going to show you what it's like to beat All, oh, every childhood memory you have is going to come back when I'm in there with you. Yeah, oh, I got a nerve. I see I hit a nerve. <laughs> yeah, you did hit a nerve, you bitch. <laughs> When I went to attack Drake, I wasn't angry. Yeah. When I went to attack, I was joyful. Oh, I, I want. I was more than happy. It seemed like a Christmas attack. <laughs> you know? like, hey. It's the only thing that made me happy. We all know these guys are going to put on a hell of a fight, but now the stakes and excitement levels have just been heightened. There is nothing in combat that sells like a true grudge. Nothing. Both of these guys are overwhelming, relentless pressure, forward strikers, but their styles are completely different. Strickland has more of a traditional boxing style and is the more technical striker, usually taking his time to break his opponents down. But what's really been proving to be a big weapon is his defense. The one sort of secret superpower Strickland has is the way he looks at this game. Very simple, not complex, but efficient, effective. Sometimes steady is better than flashy, better than fast, better than electric. Duplessis, on the other hand, is the more well-rounded fighter. He's a big threat on the feet, possessing heavy knockout power, and has proved to be the better grappler. Trickus's desire to just completely destroy somebody at any cost is so overwhelming that you can't understand it until such time that you are in there and he's on top of you. That being said, Strickland is no slouch on the ground, but we haven't seen him go there very often. Sean Strickland's takedown defense is a big question going into this Drake's Duplessis fight. There's talk about Strickland having good takedown defense and even himself saying that he might even be better on the ground than he is in the stand-up. But you just never really see it as he doesn't face a lot of wrestlers in the middleweight division. On the feet, it can be tough for Drakus to land with his wild attacks. But what is really on Strickland's side is the cardio. We know Drakus had that nose surgery before his last fight with Whitaker, where maintaining control over his breathing appeared to be less of an issue. But taking Drakus into deep waters will most likely be Strickland's plan. Drakus will come out guns blazing as he usually does and may prove to be too much in the early going. But if they make it to the championship rounds, Sean will feel right at home. And it will all come down to will and heart, where we know both thrive. Some serious leather is going to be thrown inside that octagon. What a matchup we are about to see. I am so excited to see what happens here. 